In this video I'm going to show you how to put together three cards that are included in the Christmas tree card set and I just wanted to put together some real simple cards that can be put together quickly. Um, that's one of them. I cut, that's the layered version. This is a wavy version. And here is the what I call the triangles version. So these are the three cards we're going to put together. They're fairly quick. But you know, I know how it is when you need to do, you want to make some handmade cards for somebody and uh, all of a sudden you're trying to figure out like, what do I do? So this is just a quickie uh, for those that might need it. So I like to chalk the edges, or ink the edges I should say. So I hadn't done that yet. It just gives it a, a different take. I would show you what kind of chalk ink I, I use, but unfortunately the company Colorbox, which is Clear Snap, who made Colorbox, uh, has gone out of business. So you could actually use your Distress Oxides or Distress Ink uh, with a applicator to do the same thing if you wanted to achieve the same result. So this is the, the layered one. So the way it's going to go. We just have the card base. So all the card bases are the same. It's just folded. It's just a traditional A2 card that fits in a A2 envelope. Um, if you don't have an A2 envelope, you can go ahead and uh, get one on our website in the basic envelope site um, set. I should basic envelope set. I'm talking too quick. And that's uh, a freebie. So if you didn't already see that before, that's out there. And because these are little pieces, these layers that I cut are from pattern paper that I've had on hand for a while. Uh, they have little white edges, so I'm just trying to, also the inking is good with white core papers. So that's up to you, whether you want to do it. And it'll look good either way. I just have certain things kind of bug me. And... Uh, and it takes a second to ink them. This this little chucking thing's coming apart too, so but I'll use it until it dies. So here's the base of the tree. So we're just gonna go like this, this, and then that's gonna be on the top. So let's go ahead. I'll just get my little art glitter glue that I'm using. When I can, I like to add glue to the base that I'm gluing onto, rather than have a little bit of a rather than uh, gluing, adding glue to the panel because I have a tendency to drop things. So be careful how much glue you use too. That was probably just a little bit too much. But I'm just going to line it up. The, the star will go last, so it's above it. But what's kind of nice with this is that you can have three different color types and uh, just get a fun little look. So I had three different papers that I'm using. And I'm just going to layer them on top of each other. This is why I kind of call it the layered version. So it just goes to the next level. Just line it up. And I find when I'm piecing just to kind of grab it from the sides and adjust it quickly before it dries. And then this last piece, just going to eyeball where it's going to go. Make sure I get it on the right right way. That one's oddly shaped on the top. So you can see the little Christmas tree. It's kind of fun. Now we're just going to go ahead and glue on this little star. Try not to get too much on the top there. Should lay on. You might. I'm going to put a little, couple more little dots here, so it adheres at the bottom. And have a little glue leakage, but just be careful with your glue towards the bottom of the star. You could add it to the star first. Then we're just going to add it there. 
when gluing this onto here, I'd recommend laying it flat like that. I don't know if you can see this, but this is the die cuts with a view. It has it's already pre-embossed craft paper. It it is nice. I really like. I usually emboss my own, but I had I found it on sale somewhere, and I thought, what the heck? Let's give it a try. I like it, but I like the little swirly one the best for, of course, for Christmas. There's like little flourish in here. And just be really careful when you glue this piece on. And the reason I say that, again, if you just heard me earlier, I'm just going to put a fine thin thing of, is that I have the dropsies a lot, so I tend to drop things. So I'm going to hold on to it tightly. And I'm just eyeballing where the center is. And it doesn't matter if it's the center on top and bottom, but I gave myself just a little wiggle room. So if you want to do it towards the bottom more, or just omit this. I mean, you could put whatever you wanted. I'm just trying to give you a quick cards to be able to put together. And then this one in the middle. And then you could just add your own tag or sentiment or something like that, like a little tag. I'm just going to add a little tag. Um, or a printing cut uh, sentiment. It could be like there, or you could actually use write it in with your pen if you wanted to do that, but I had already cut these out, so that will not be happening on these cards. I guess you could still use the foil quill after the fact. I'm not an expert foil quill user yet. So I'm just going to center that, or you don't have to, that's up to you. Remember, this is supposed to be just quick, easy cards. Because I could, like, I'm going a little slower, but I could make a whole bunch of these, cut a bunch, and just have them done. And then it looks like a nice little homemade card. So I'm going to put that aside. Let's do the second one. So this one... It's just going to be like this. going to go behind and then behind. So it'll be, it's just die cut on the top and then we put colors behind it. So you can see I just inked the edges a little bit just like the first card and then we're just going to flip this over. What I would suggest is that you work with the uh, middle part first. So you can see that it kind of goes on both sides. It does overlap a little bit. So the best way to do this, in my opinion, is to do something like this. Remember, if a little glue, we just, the goal, you don't want to get glue in the holes, in between the holes. But I'm going to add a little bit here. And this is going to overlap down here, so we're going to just add a little bit here. And then you can just do really light, you can put dots here too. I'm going to start at the bottom just to make sure that it's we're just centering it and just drop it down so the biggest deal with this is just not getting too much glue around the edges and I'm just going to flip it around again and if you do get glue on your mat just go ahead make sure you have a wet paper towel handy because it will leak out the sides. It's, I like this because it's kind of a good effect, but it's easy. That's the hardest part in my opinion, because now we're just going to put this, we're just going to do the same thing here. I'm adding the glue on the top and bottom on that one rather than, the, than on the sides here. And I can eyeball it. I did it pretty far to the side so it could stay. You don't, don't need much glue. And then this last piece just goes like that. So I would just add glue around this. Remember we're going to glue this to the card base so you're not going to see any of this. So that's why if there's a little leakage it's not a huge deal as long as you wipe it off and don't get it on the other side. When you set it down, don't move it around a lot because you'll get glue coming through. So that's what the card base looks like. So again, you can add your own sentiment down here. You can do that before you cut. 
and then simple enough we just add this to the the front well, you could use a kind of a for cards I just tend to use liquid glue when I start using liquid glue I always use it so just making sure it's centered close enough on the top and bottom just the side that I was really focusing on and then just to give it a little bling I'm just going to add these little gold enamel dots what's nice about this if they're not too bulky where it will call, cause too many issues to send it and these are from doodlebug design I'll use those on, I'll use the bigger ones on the next card, some larger ones. And, the, and a tip, if you do send, you know, a lot of people say you have to, I forget, hand scan, I forget what it is through at least the U.S. Postal Service. Um, hand scan, you have to pay extra because of it, the bulk of cards. Well, some people use pad, padded envelopes. What I do if I have a little bit of 3D embellishment like brads or enamel dots is that I just fold an extra piece of cheap cardstock that you get at the uh, office supply store just over it so they pull it out and it kind of gives it extra padding. I've never had a problem at all so and I've sent a lot of bulky cards. So that's the second one. And the third one's here. Same concept. You can just put that card there. So we already inked the front. Let's do the middle first. So this, like I said, if you're going to put glue, you don't have to put glue on these little lines inside. In fact, if you do, you may have some issues. So I'm just going to kind of go around the edge here and just really lightly dot right there. And if you need to, you could always use a tool or your finger. If you use your finger, you need to make sure you wipe your finger off so you don't get it on the front. But now I'm just lining it up and just eyeballing it. I have a lot of extras on the side and I'm lining it up to the top of that cut on the bottom to that opening for the trunk. And I'm just going to get rid of this extra So you can see it comes right through like that. I used kind of a pine tree cutout for both of these. Then this will go like that. You can overlap. We want it to kind of not go beyond the top. So you want to not match it up. You kind of want to go a little bit further down. Kind of made it round so we'll just make the glue round. Then if you want to you can put little dots the corners here. Just when you place it, you want to start and then continue. So we're just going to go like this. Start down and I'm going to rotate it down. If there's any glue showing beyond that, as long as you're covering that hole, that's all that matters. Because now we're going to add, after we add the trunk, we're just going to glue it to the front of the card anyway. So we're good. And then this one. I'm going to show you, you can just add glue here. Some of that glue still may be exposed because it's not very wide. So it's okay. I'm just eyeballing it. See how I eyeball it? And then I come down and just put it down. So that's the front of that card. And then we'll just add it and we'll add a little bit of uh, enamel dots in the corner. You could also use brads or something else like that. And I'm just centering it. Just kind of carefully rubbing it. I sometimes do that once I get it on. Just so my hands don't get on anything. Things get stuck on anything. So we're going to add these enamel dots on the edges. Because, you know, I like just add a little, little bling. 
The gold's a little bit different than the one in the star, but they're fun and festive looking. And these cards actually will be sent to people. Because as I do my cards, this is how I get my Christmas done. I don't just pick one card because I'm too bored with one card. So here's a different version of that same card. So you can see you can get different looks with different paper, just to give you an idea. I didn't put any brads on that one. But we have those, and then we have the ones we made. So if you're looking for a simple some simple Christmas cards to do, again, it doesn't come with any sentiments, but you can easily add little tags, stamps, anything like that. Um, this is a great set for you to have on hand. If you did like this project, I would appreciate if you would go ahead and hit a little thumbs up below or subscribe if you haven't done so already and uh, share your information. If you like this, if you have other friends that use uh, crickets and silhouettes, I'm struggling still to get people out there seeing my design, so if you like it, share it, please. And I do thank you so much for your support for those that continue to watch, and thank you so much for watching.